Hi, Mark. Thanks. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for joining me in, in such short notice. Um, we are witnessing something extraordinary happening in the US right now. Uh, there is talks about defunding the police, uh, talks about prison abolition, and despite the repression from the police, government, military, the protests are growing. Uh, it's been 10 days um, going on now. And also around the globe, you've got like, you know, solidarity protests all over Europe and the world. Uh, you've got celebrities joining in, athletes joining in, sports figures. So yeah, my question is, are we, in your opinion, witnessing a, a turning point or potentially a historical moment in terms of US politics? Yeah, I think it's an, it's an interesting moment. Uh, you know, there are junctures in history where we see this happen. Uh, I, you, you think about the sort of civil upheaval we see in, 60, in, in the 60s, whether it's, you know, Watts, um, whether it's um, uh, Detroit, uh, those struggles were directly connected to um, the formation of a new political agenda. Those, 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 those struggles uh, led to policy changes. Um, we were shifting the national conversations. And in some ways, places that we sh maybe shouldn't have gone in some places, where, ways we needed to go. But the rebellion you saw on, on the streets in 67, 68 um, mattered. Uh, what we saw in uh, LA in 92 um, put a spotlight on police brutality in a way that hadn't been done in a long time. And the video camera made it significant because now America was forced to look at violence of the state on black bodies. In many ways, it was the same kind of dramatization uh, of violence that we saw with King on the Pettus Bridge. Um, the difference is, of course, King was a nonviolent protester who was, who was staging a protest that would show the violence that was being visited upon black people by the state um, very strategically, uh, which is different, um, but in some ways not that different than what you see when people, when police are caught by surprise beating people or shooting people, killing people torturing people. Because again, America's forced to wrestle with the contradiction between being a liberal democratic state and uh, having citizens that are not full members of that, full citizens of that state, not in the legal sense, but in terms of everyday ways of belonging, in terms of safety, in terms of security, in terms of protection, in terms of a social safety net. So the, 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 the rebellions we're seeing right now in Minnesota and Atlanta and Philadelphia and New York, uh, really all around the country and indeed the world, uh, are a signpost again that America's forced to pay attention in a particular way. Um, I won't go so far as to say that it's going to pivot us into a new political direction because as much force as you see on the ground, you see equal sometimes, if not more force uh, from the state to push back, um, whether it's through the media apparatus, changing, challenging the narrative, you know, framing people as rioters, as opposed to people with a legitimate political framework uh, and agenda. Uh, whether it's uh, moving the conversation to focusing on uh, the harm that's being caused by protesters rather than the considerable harm being done by law enforcement to the protesters, um, or whether it's uh, hastily creating a resolution to the case like George Floyd, where they say, okay, well, the, the four officers are arrested now, and now there's nothing to fight over, by reducing the scope and the vision of this political struggle to a single, to a single act or a single uh, scenario. All of this is part of the way that they create um, resolution in a way that doesn't actually allow us to make long-term change. So I'm hopeful, you know, um, but I'm not convinced, not convinced that what we're seeing on the ground will lead to long-term outcome unless we change our political vocabulary, unless we change our goal. What's, what's our freedom dream? What's our end game? What's our goal here? Uh, when it comes to um, conversations about police, for example, are we asking simply for tougher crackdowns on police when they beat us and kill us? Are we asking uh, for civilian review boards, which is a much more progressive reform? Or are we gonna articulate a radical freedom dream of a world without police? At the same time on the ground in the same moments in the same exact spaces, there are different people asking for different things. and. At, without resistance, the state won't even arrest these officers. 
With resistance, they will. With resistance, you might get a body camera, as you saw after 2014 struggles. Uh, but what are we pushing for? What's our end game here? And the, the determination about whether or not we'll, we'll see the kind of political ends that we want to see hinge entirely upon what kind of radical uh, dream we're, we're articulating to each other and to the world. What kind of demands are we going to make? Thanks, Mark. Cheers.